Hey guys, we are in the basement. Today we're gonna do a John's Arcade on the road. That is right guys, you know what? We are going to Chicago. And this is gonna be the first in a many part video series because you know what? We're gonna be shooting a lot of video in Chicago. And in this video, the first video in this series, we are gonna see some amazing games. We're gonna see some rare games that you have never seen before prototype games because you see we're gonna be visiting Joe Majera now Joe Majera is a collector that has been in this hobby for a very long time he lives in the Chicago area and he's managed to collect some pretty amazing and super rare games games that I have never seen before you know I've been to a lot of arcades I've seen a lot of collections in this video we're gonna see stuff that I have never ever seen before and stuff that I, I I'm pretty sure you guys have never seen before. And again, this is the first in a many part series of Chicago videos. Today, we're gonna do Joe's first, and then we're gonna do some following videos after this with Greg from Arcade Impossible. We're gonna be going to Galloping Ghost. So look out for those in the coming weeks. But anyway, for now, let's get in the car. Let's drive to Chicago and let's visit Joe Majera's Arcade. And guys, buckle up. There's gonna be some pretty cool stuff. All right, let's get out of here. Guys. Hey, All right, guys. <laughs> so guys, we're in suburban Chicago and I'm with Joe Majera, right? Yep. So Joe, you're gonna show us around. You've been collecting for a long time, right? How long? Uh, 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. Okay, and so right now we're, this is one of his storage areas here, and, and, and Joe was showing me some of his stuff, guys. There's some mind-blowing stuff in here. I mean, like, Joe, what is this this cabinet here, this white one? It's a Mazer Blazer. It's a kind of an obscure Stern Who game. makes, it's a Stern game, okay. Yeah. Controls hang down from like the marquee area. Yeah. And everyone says it's lame. I played it. I liked it. Except the controls are in position. It kills your back to play. You got to lean down. Oh, really? But I, <laughs> the game. artwork is is awesome. Yeah. Those little guys on the side. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. And you got oh, you got some good pins domino in here. Man. Yeah, I, I had a Domino Man. I kind of miss mine because I I, I'm, I'm, I like the Midway stuff, you know? Yeah, I do. That would I look do. good next to my Tron and Journey, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would look good against by the Journey, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Shape exactly. Stuff. And then you got Robotron, you got some Atari uh, vector stuff here, like Black Widow and Gravatar you and really stuff. You really can't see it well, but in back of the Robotron's a Beezer. A Beezer? Yeah. Wow. That's conversion of a, like, oh, actually you can see it from this side. Okay, who, who makes Beezer? Tong. Tong? Yeah. T-O-N-G? Yeah. Conversion for, like, Galaxian and Pac-Man cabs. Oh, dude, that looks, oh, wow. Look at that side art on it. Yeah. The sound is not in MAME. The game itself is in MAME, but the sound isn't. It's is that right? Trackball game. It's a pretty hard game to play, but I like it. Wow, dude, that is cool. And then on the other side there, I see I see some Cinematronics cabinets. Look, they look like Dragon Lair cabs, but they're not, are they? <laughs> Out of South Dakota. <laughs> Out of South Dakota. Yep. So these are Cosmic Chasms. Right. And you got two of them, and you drove to South Dakota to get these? Yep, 14 hours one way. Holy, how, many of you, how many of these do you think exist? Not many, right? No, probably. And this is a vector game, correct? Yeah. 6400 monitors, it's a really unique. It's the only game that used that monitor. Wow, what's going on with this control panel? Did someone make this? No, it's plastic, that's the way it is. Oh, it was? Yeah, it's plastic and the overlay's already ripped off. Oh, they put it over Plexi? That's yeah. interesting. Because it lights up, there's a marquee light in there. Oh, really? Oh, lights, that is cool. It lights up, yeah. I'm surprised more people didn't do that. That's a great idea, right? Yeah. Put Plexi and a marquee, be uh, uh, the artwork behind it, and then it's got like a shroud on it, like kind of like Tron, and then in the back here, it lights up, so that whole shroud area lights up. Right, I think there's three marquee, three fluorescent Dif lights for it. Okay, yeah. And then you've got two reproduction cabinets that you're going to transfer the guts into, right? And right. you're going to make some new ones. Right. Boy, that Beezer is really cool, dude. It's definitely cool. John. I'm actually, loving that artwork. I found that in Florida, and John Exidy had it shipped for me. Oh, really? He gave me a nice favor to do that for me. It looks like a really clean conversion with the artwork on yeah. it. 
Yeah, usually they don't have the artwork on, but guy actually put the side art on. And that used to be a Galaxian? Galaxian or Pac-Man. Okay. One of the two. It's white, looks like, in the back. So you know, I see a Taito cabinet over here. Right. The, uh, <laughs> the glass, it's got glass artwork, so I take it off for the winter, but this is a Cram, which is another pretty hard-to-find Taito game. Wow. Look at that control panel. That thing's sweet. And it's a red Taito. Is that the only game that came in the red cabinet? Uh, or it's kind of like a... Taito Black Widow. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you have one of those? I, you have the I, kit, don't you? No, I found... Mark said that. I found a guy who's got it. The oh. author of the game. Oh, really? He lives about four miles from me. Is that right? And he's got the ROMs. <laughs> I'm trying to get it out of him because the ROMs aren't in MAME. No kidding. And he's just not interested. I mean, he's not like saying, no, you can't have them. He's just not interested in digging them out. Right, he's got no motivation. Yeah. So I got a picture of the, the <laughs> control panel and the uh, Tato Black Widow marquee on my website. Hey, buddy. Hey, doggy. <laughs> Cool, and uh, so, all right, so you got another storage thing we can look at? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, let's go check it out. All right. All right, so Joe's opening his other storage area here. And uh, got a Rampart, Stargate. I love Rampart, by the way. That's a fun game. Play that with like three people. Tempest, another Cinematronics cat. Which one is that? Oh, that's, that's Dragon's, Dragon's Lair. Lair. Okay. What's back there? Asterac. Asterix, Jesus Christ. That's a vector game, right? Yeah, that uses a... So Asterix uses the 6400, and, and Cosmic Chasm uses the G08-105. Okay. The only two games to use those monitors. Wow. Are those tough monitors to get going? No. If you know, if you know somebody who fixes them, yeah. I buddy, you can fix them. <laughs> Straight back there, my favorite game of all time. Missile Command Cockpit. Missile Command Cockpit. <laughs> nice. I do love that cabinet. All right, so what is this game? <laughs> oh, you'll see the name. Uh... I don't know. Is that I'm over here? Hang on. Wait, wait. Let me let me try to guess. I don't know what that is. Start. No. Oh, dude. Come on. Dedicated wood cabinet blaster. You got a blaster? Wood cabinet. That's rarer than the Dura mode, right? Yeah, way, yeah, way rarer. Dude, that thing looks mint. It is. It's from, from an employee's really? from an employee family. And that's a Eugene Jarvis game. It's kind of, I mean, they're all kind of sequels to, to like Defender Robotron. and Stargate yeah. and Robotron. They're all yeah. taking place in the same universe, aren't they? Yeah. Holy cow, dude. Let's see if I can get, get this out. Dude, Blaster, dude, that's awesome. You know what? I'd rather have that than Dura Mold. That's cooler. I would. I would. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is really cool. And that's the coolest thing I've seen so far. <laughs> that is a cool piece. Wow. Joe, that, that that needs to be in your house, man. <laughs> it is. It's going to be. It's, yeah. I have, I'm going to switch it with a game I have in my house. So. Joe, if you ever want to sell that. <laughs> that one, I don't know. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's mint. It is. It's really nice. What is this yellow cabinet? I mean, you've got some stuff, dude, I have never seen before. That's a Stern Great Guns. What kind of game is that? It's a, you know, it's like a shoot, it's like a carnival shooting gallery game. It's a, it's a video game, but it's like a, you're in a carnival shooting gallery. Like, like, like Sega Carnival? Kinda? No, nah, not Carnival. Totally, it, it's different. Where is it a joystick game or? No, it's a gun game. Oh, it's a gun game. Yeah. Oh. Which I don't know if we can see. Wow. Dude, that look at the artwork on it. It's not in Maine because I can't figure out how to. It's not in Maine, huh? No. Can we yeah. see it from up there? Unfortunately not. It's try. okay. Dude, unbelievable. So you, you missed, still missed the biggest line in this guy. Are you serious? <laughs> what are we missing? That corner. Back, which one? Right here? Keep going. Keep going? going outside corner. Cube Quest. What? Dude, where, what is this stuff you have? <laughs> with, with the seat. With the seat? That's a laser disc game? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit, who is Sign You Trek? It's the only game they ever made. Really? Yeah. Is it a good game? I think it's a real good game. Yeah? I played it at uh, California Extreme. I was like, this is an awesome game. I gotta try and find one of these. Wow. It's a trackball. Yeah. Really? Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> Wow, it's, it's, it's like a cockpit? Or you well, sit down? It's a city, kind of a cockpit type thing. What kind of game is it? What do you do in it? You're, uh... Is it a motorcycle or...? A little bit like Tempest, where you're like, you're going in toward the center rather than things coming out from the center. Okay. Kind of opposite of Tempest. You're like on the outskirts of the Tempest going and th things are coming at you. Kind of okay. like Tempest. Okay. Kind of like Tempest. Wow. Dude. <laughs> 
You have some amazing stuff, Joe. So, but you've got more stuff. Well, Still, decide, right? But here, just one thing to check out. <laughs> yeah. Up the stairs, you can see a monitor farm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a pretty nice stairway. So this well, is your like the rolling stairs, like in a Home Depot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wow, dude, so you got, this is your monitor storage up here. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, monitors are essential to this hobby, man. I've got a bunch in my garage, but not this many. Just games parted out, <laughs> monitors picked up on operates. Are you using PC monitors for anything? No. No? Yeah, you, just pick them Just up. keep them around? Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Watch your head. <laughs> Pretty low up there. You got a little mega touch here. Oh, this is a little. It's a rampart. Oh, it's a rampart. Yeah. In a like a merit cabinet. Yeah. Really? Did an operator make that? Uh, a guy got it at an estate at a estate sale. Yeah. He got it for like twenty five bucks. He says I just got it because it was cheap. Yeah. And I got it from from like forty bucks. So <laughs> I had no idea. Where it came from. All right, cool. Well, should we, should we check out your other stuff? Yeah, let's go in the basement. All right, cool. All right, guys, we're in Joe's basement. That is overrun by operate stuff. That's okay. <laughs> storage Holy stuff. crap, dude. So, Quantum. So, actually, uh, some games that you may have never played that you, I thought you might want to try. So, he's got a dedicated Major Havoc. Yeah, which, unfortunately, the control panel was sent to RAM controls, so I had to get a repro made. And, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you sent your control panel to them to copy? Yeah. And you never got it back? No. Mm. Yeah, I love Major Havoc. I have the Tempest conversion. I'm trying to get a dedicated one. I know where one is in Connecticut, but it, it might be years before he agrees to sell it to me. I love this game so much, Joe. It's a great game. And guys, this is the dedicated Major Havoc. They only made like 500 of these. You know, most of them are conversion kits. Right. And uh, sick game. Is this an original roller? No, it's a repro roller. It is. I had to get a whole repro control panel. The material's different than the one I have. It's it's yeah, it's more solid. Yeah, it's, the original it, one's a little more uh, translucent. Yeah. Like the Williams buttons, almost a little bit. Right. Yeah, unfortunately. Marble Madness. Cubert. Let's see. Whoa, what's this? What is that? <laughs> it's Atari prototype never got released. That's why I dug it out. I thought you might want to play that one. Aka Ara. Aka R. Aka R. This is this is a prototype Atari game. Yep. It was never released. Right. Oh my God. It didn't test well, so they never released it. I thought it's. I think it's an awesome game. I it, like it a lot. Dude, it looks. Is this hand drawn artwork? Uh, no. It. It's not. This is. They actually printed this. Yeah. It looks like prototype artwork. Yeah, you know. I can see like the the markers. Like you know, look at that. Have you ever looked at it? Like pulled it out? Maybe here I can show you something. Here. Um, this is plastic. It'll crack yeah. on you. But I think the. It doesn't have side art, but it's got a cool thing on the side. Oh, that's there. neat. Yeah. That little annotation with the Atari logo? Yeah. Wow, it looks like they were experimenting with a new cabinet design or something, you know? Yeah. It even has team molding in the little circle. Right. That's cool. Doesn't have artwork otherwise, though. Yeah. Holy crap. And, uh... It's unusual to see an Atari prototype in the Chicago area, right? This stuff usually stays in California, doesn't it? And I got it out of California. Oh, you did? You got it out of California? Yeah. And you got a Wacko, which is a cool midway game. Everyone, you know, the, the thing about Wacko is it's all slanted. It's yeah. a fun game. And then Turkey Shoot. This is a Williams game. There's, you have feathers in there. <laughs> well, I went down. I need to show you the feathers if you yeah. haven't played it. Yeah, I've never played it. Cool. I would love it. I, I watched videos of it because I think you were selling this, right? I had another one I sold. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually considered it. And I actually went and watched videos of it. <laughs> but there's actually feathers in there. Maybe we'll check it out later. And then, oh, Agent X, dude. This this Cloak and Dagger game. Yeah, this Cloak and Dagger. That's an original Agent X. That's not a repro. So, it is. Yeah. So, like, I think I guess there was only, like, seven of those. Is that right? There's supposed to be, like, 20, 13 Cloak and Daggers and seven Agent Xs. That's at least what I read. Wow. And they made this game for the movie with Dabney Coleman, right? The Cloak and Dagger? Well, they made that game before the movie, and then they renamed it. Oh. Because, of, because of the movie. They, oh, is that they right? They came to them, so they make us a game for the... Oh, movie. and and they had this game already done, they said yeah. we can just rename this. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. It, I, I Actually, I enjoy the game. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. I didn't know you played it, so I dug those... These yeah, I, well, we should out. definitely play it, because I don't think uh, the viewers might have never seen that. I played it at a fun spot. And usually you see that, like in Williams cabinets and stuff, they make conversion kits. Right. Yeah. Right. I think that's why Atari made it was for converting defenders and other right. Uh, yeah. Cabinets. All right. So what else? So you got a Quantum. Is that an original Quantum? It's an original Quantum. Uh, I actually I 
eat your front glass floor. Oh, you do? Yeah. I need... Now, guys, just so you know, Joe is actually made the reproduction parts for a quantum. I made the wiring harness. The wiring harness. I got the... And the marquee. And the marquee. I got right. that from you. So when we're doing the quantum uh, restore, or whatever you want to call it, the wiring harness and the marquee came from Joe. CPO, depending who you bought it from. The CPO I got from, uh, what's his face, down in, by Marengo. Uh, oh, Hans. Yeah, from Hans, yeah. Okay. He, originally, Tom McClintock and I and Noel Johnson did them probably 10 years ago. Okay. Very limited run, and then Hans has reproduced them a couple times since then. Awesome. Yeah, I need to get that piece of glass. I have like almost every single part. I have a space tool cabin I might, I might uh, convert. I bought the wood from uh, mm -hmm. DPT Wiz. And Food Fight. I love Food Fight. Great game. The game makes me happy. Yeah. yeah it's a fun game. <laughs> yeah. It's just bright and happy. Bubble, original Bubbles. I had a Bubbles. Yeah. Wood cabinet. Yep, wood cabinet. I actually prefer... You know, Dura molds are okay, but... Mm. I think that's rarer too than the Dura mold, right? The wood one? Dura, no, and Bubbles, Dura mold's way rarer. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. And you got a Journey. Yeah. Oh, I should have brought you a cassette. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, yours is all original, right? Yeah, it's probably one of the worst condition games in my room, though. It's yeah, but it looks good for original. Yeah, is that the, original? The good. Is that original Marquee, too? Yeah. Marquee and... Yeah, they're both original. It looks great. And Tempest, Super Glob. I, I love that game. That was a conversion they made for Pac-Man. Right. It's in a Pac-Man cabinet. Yeah. It's a cool game. Asteroids Deluxe. You know, I like that. And Stargate... He's got some pins, uh, Next Generation, Star Trek, uh, Tales of Arabian Night, a lot of people like that. Revenge from Mars. Now, you have another blaster, Joe. <laughs> I do. This is the Dermold. Okay. This is the Dermold one. And guys, if you don't know what Dermold is, it, it's literally this plastic cabinet, like a vacuum form cabinet. And they did it for, for Bubbles and Blaster. Was, what else did they make? A couple of Sinistars, a couple Sinistars. of Robotron, Robotrons. Like, they made a Robotron and a Dermold? There's like two or three. They really? Yeah. And this is, a blaster. This is mega game. rare, though. Yeah. Boy, that does look cool, actually. I, I gotta say, seeing it in person, though. But the wood one out there is awesome, too. The, yeah, the <laughs> and the wood one, I like that. Now, iRobot, you guys have seen that before. My buddy Jay's got one. I, I love iRobot. It's a great game. The cabinet's very similar to Major Havoc, except the base is really fat. It's like the same as Firefox, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Cool, man. This is some, so, should we, should we check out some games? You wanna yeah. turn some on, or? Yeah. <laughs> Man, I cannot believe some of this stuff you have. And all the stuff in the middle of the room is operate stuff that unfortunately didn't get put away yet. Uh, actually, I don't know. Yeah, Joe's basement doesn't usually look like this. He just threw some stuff down here because he raided some uh, operators' warehouses. Let's see what's up here. As Cubert. Is it going to be Cubert or Cubert's Cubes? Oh, you have a Cubes board in it? Yeah. It's not a multi kit. I actually have just two boards in there. It's Cubert. Uh, so I want to see this Atari game, man. All right. Here. You know what? And it actually is better in the, with the lights off. So I'm sure. Gonna flip, flip the lights off on this one. Going back. Okay. I think it's a lot better with the lights off. <clears throat> Here, so. Uh, I'll go first, I'll show you what's going on. Okay, we got a little oh, test pattern what? here. <laughs> this game never lets me down. Really? Well, uh oh. We may not be playing it. Oh, that sucks. I can't believe I am so bummed out. Oh no, Joe. <laughs> I am so bummed out. I am too. I really wanted to see this. Oh, the, the bezel lights up with rotating lights all around it and Are stuff. Are you serious? Oh, man. <laughs> Jinx. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I, oh. I've had this game like 10 years. It's never had a problem. Of course, and I come down here. <laughs> Does Turkey Shoot have a, uh, what was that, a coil in there? Yeah. Shoot the, shoot the feathers. Yeah, Ooh, something is coming up. Oh man, that sucks. I am so bummed out. <laughs> All right, well, we won't let it get us down. How, how about turkey shoot? Okay, you want to see? I do. I want to see this game. We can play a game. Okay. So are the feathers really obvious? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, you may want to back up though. The feathers are actually right in the front glass. Okay. So, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to get those turkeys before they rob a rob a store and get the money to the side of the store. So the turkeys are bad. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they robbing stores, Joe? 
game. They have uh, grenades? Oh, okay, that is cool. <laughs> you have one grenade and one freeze per round, Adam. So a bunch of, is, is there like an air compressor in there or something? It, it, it's, it's like a window, it's like a window box, yeah. And there's a coil that, it, that goes off. Yeah. All right, that, dude, that's awesome. Now, are those original feathers? <laughs> those are feathers, yeah. I mean, those are the feathers that came with the game? Yeah. Are they like real animal feathers or like synthetic? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, that feathers thing, that, that was quite the gimmick, huh? Yeah, the feather box is called, yeah. Do you like this game? Is it fun? I like it a lot. It's yeah. a very fun game. Very fun game. I like it too. Everyone always says I should get a gun game. This is what I need, something like this. This is the one I'd get. Yeah. It's the only gun game I have. Yeah, not Operation Wolf or something like that. <laughs> well, cool. Any other games we should check out before we go? Agent X? Yeah, let's see that. So, I actually like this game. You want to play it? Sure. It's a two-handed game. It's like Robotron controls. All right. So, what you're trying to do is you come in... You're the green guy. Okay. You come in on one side of the maze, and yep. you have to get out to the other side of the maze without getting hit. And the move and shoot are like Robotron yep. joysticks. Intermissions are awesome. Yeah, I know. I love it. See, I thought that was Dabney Coleman. Like, I, I, it seems almost too perfect, the way it fits with the movie. All the, all the white ones are good things to get. So okay. The white ones now, you can try and get more points by igniting the fuse. And they have to get out of there before it blows up. Yeah. Sweet. And then they made a conversion kit for Crystal Castles. Is that right? I mean, it's basically a Crystal Castles cabinet, and then Rich made the artwork to, to go with it. Is that what it was? or? Uh, it's basically a Crystal Castles cabinet, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But it wasn't a kit for Crystal Castles that Atari released? No, it was only for... Um, for, for the Williams stuff. For the Williams one. Okay. And then so Rich made the artwork so that you could turn a Crystal Castles into this. Right. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And then every fourth level, I finished, this is the third level here. Yep. Every fourth level is an invisible level. Oh, wow. And so you have to get, the white box I got is one third of the map of the room. So if you get all three in the first three levels, it'll give you a guide to walk through the invisible room. So, and if you step off it, you could hit a bomb very easily. I see. Ooh, I got so it. it's like a landmine kind of thing. Yeah, those, all those X's were the landmines. <clears throat> so you get a quick... And if you just keep your feet on the, so, on the arrow. <coughs> explain to me, what exactly are you trying to do right now? You're, you're collecting... You're basically just keep going through levels. Okay. Going through levels. But how do you get out of the level? Like, what's... You get from one side to the other oh, side. Oh, that's all it is. That's all it is, yeah. And then if you want to linger, you can get some extra points. Right, if you want to just start shooting everything. Okay. So you're just trying to get to the exit, and the place is kind of like booby-trapped. Right. And if you really want to try and get some extra points, you can try and ignite the fuse where it'll go off earlier. I see. But then you got to hightail it out of there before the explosion hits you. Okay. All right. Barely made it, yeah. You get extra points for igniting Dude, this the game is sweet. I need one of these. Uh, now, I want to get that map, which helps me in the invisible room. Here. Okay, and you can shoot through the walls to get into like right. that little cavern up there. Right. I'm going to not get the map on purpose to show you what happens when you don't have the map. That's level six. I think I had to go through one more. So there's, you get three maps, three rooms with a map, and then you get an invisible room. I'm just shooting my way through here because I want to just avoid those bad guys and get to the invisible room. I'll okay. Show you what happens. Okay, so I didn't get some of the maps here, and you have to kind of guess your way through it. When you get close to the landmines, you'll get a quick glimpse of them. I see. See, I got one map, so they only got one. Oh, part I of the see. Room. I see. Okay. And so when you get I the map, it shows you the safe way to travel without yeah. hitting the landmines. Yeah. Now I'm kind of guessing. Yeah. Uh, I get it. Okay. Yeah, I played as a fun spot, and I kind of, you know, didn't really fully know what I was doing, but I was passing the levels. <laughs> So the map makes it much easier because it, it gives it you. The it tells off. you where to go. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So any you should look at before. Trap shoot. Have you ever seen trap shoot the wall game? No, that's like a EM type game, isn't it? Uh, they have an EM version. The original version is EM. This is the updated version. Okay. Here's one. Yeah, going back over there. This is a. 
this game gets constant, non-stop play. I've seen these time. for sale a bunch of times, and they're usually pretty inexpensive. Right. Right. And it's got like a big LED. Uh, yeah. And a very easy game to play. What makes it so much fun is even the women will play it because they, you know, they never, they're not into games. They don't like games. But they can play this game because it's so easy. Here, let's come back. So is there a gun? What is this? This is the remote control. Okay. Up there on the right is a wire. That's the antenna. Okay. So you don't have to go like this. You just yeah. don't have to point it away. So you just have a point. Wow, it has a DMD on it? Yeah. I've never seen this, this okay, version. It's just a timing game. We're going to go back and forth. I missed. You're up. Okay, that is cool. And it's All just right. a timing button. You and and the guy's always shot. aimed. Fire. Yeah, he's always aimed right if you time it right. So he doesn't move. He's just he's stuck in a static direction. Well, and left, right, or middle. Okay. Turn the light off here. All right, Joe, this is cool. This is a really good game. Got it. You can get an accuracy of one to four. You get three. So if you get four, you get a trophy, but you actually have one to four. Then there's a doubles every every fourth round or something. That is so cool. Like I said, I've seen these for sale a bunch of times. I never fully understood what it was and how it worked. And I don't think I've ever seen the DMD version. It's always the, the older one. And so it lights up behind it? Yeah. Played at 20. If you missed, you forfeit a point. So who made this game? Do you know? Like the company? Creative Entertainment Solution. Okay. They're still in business. Did they make other stuff? You know, they make a lot of boards for uh, uh, the Redemption games now. Oh, okay. You have it pointed up. I got it. Ooh. Oh, you have to point it up? Well, you have to have it at least pointed toward the antenna. I see. Double score six. Yeah, run doubles, you get double score. Well, I get to see a trophy come up. You can see the trophy symbol. All right, so here we go. Good job, <laughs> fast ones are tough. Trophy. I got a trophy, is that good? Yeah. Oh, wow. So the game plays to 20. If between you, you get three trophies, the game will extend to 30. So there's incentive to try and play good. All right, here we go. Team two ready. Ah. In the old version, the EM version yeah. by, by Gremlin, mm -hmm. you didn't forfeit a point when you missed. And so you had a bunch of drunk guys in a bar, games that take three and four hours. Is that right? Because they keep missing and you're right. waiting to play the next game and they never finish. Ah. So they, they caught out. Boy, this they, game is way cooler than I ever thought. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Good sound effects. Yeah. The original version, the EM version, has no sound effects. 19, this is it. You get one hit and it's over. On doubles. All right, here we go. Oh, that was close. It's a fast Missed. On Forfeit point, okay. I can't miss or you win. You won? No, I, no. if I missed, you would get a point. Oh, Another I see. Trophy. One more trophy, we go to 30. Expert. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's it. Winner. I won? Yep. Really? 20 to 15. Wow. Joe, that thing is, is cool. I got to say. That is far cooler than I ever imagined. Did you add those lights up there? Or? No, it's come stock with the game. It does. A lot of times they're missing because they break off so easy. Yeah. But uh, see, I still see this in bars. I know a bar in Chicago that's got this. This game was made like 2000. Really? It's the newest game in my game. Well, maybe the pins might be newer. Yeah. Wow, that is awesome. All right. Well, hey, Joe. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Thanks for letting me hang out, dude. Yeah. You, you truly... I mean, I have been to a lot of arcades in the last year or two, you know. I've seen some stuff today that I have never seen before. And and I really want to thank you for sharing it with me, man. I mean, wow. That blaster's sick. <laughs> yeah, I actually kind of I kind of like that game, too. Do you like it? I do like it. I played it a lot on the J-Rock. Mm -hmm. It's it's a cool game. It didn't get a lot of love, though, when it came out. Did it? No, not really. It was kind of a bomb, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And that was one of the last Williams Eugene Jarvis games, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and the graphics are so like Atari 2600 black boxy. Yeah, well, it's big. They scale the, the sprites yeah. up really large and stuff. So, yeah. all right, guys. Well, that's going to do it. Let's, let's go back to the basement. Thanks, Joe.
See ya. All right. <laughs> Before we go, Joe's gonna show us how to play Quantum. And you guys know we're, we're doing a Quantum restart right now. So Quantum, uh, the controls are just a, a trackball. Track ball. That's, That's it, it, right? That's it, and a start button. And a start button, that's it. So, all right, Joe, how do you play this? All right, um, the finish the finish around, you wanna get the solid dots. Yep. Every, everything else is just sucker plays. And you get rid of them by circling them with the trackball, right? Right. Okay. And you could circle the other ones and get points, but to finish the level, get the solid dots. Okay. So, all right, show us how it's done. Okay. Come over here. Start in level one, you circle it, and it's just a trackball movement and circle it. And when it, if it hits your, if the dot hits it, it ends the circle that you, you've drawn so far. I see. And you can try and get extra points by getting those little guys, which I'm not good at. And then as the game gets harder, more things will start happening. This is the early levels. Again, you're just getting the dots. If you can get more than one, you get more points. Does the trail go forever? Uh, like you can you can make a pretty big trail. You can, so okay, you know, half of it. And if, if anything hits the trail, it, it kills it. Right. And in a couple more levels, other enemies will start coming out. Like that triangle thing. It's just ignore them because you don't need to have to finish the level. You get points, but they're sucker plays to kill you. Gotcha. So I'm really concentrating on the dots, and that's it. I'm actually just staying out of the way of everything else. It's such an abstract game. It's cool. One more, oh, that guy. So that thing's expanding. Yeah, he's, he's tough. He expands and he just gets you. Just stay out of his way. You can get him, but he's really hard to get. And you don't need to get them to clear the level. Right. You just focus on those those like little planet things. Right. One of the other plays got me. Now the next level, I think, yeah, you're gonna get a line. It starts out blue. You can go between it when it's blue, when it's yellow, you can. When it's red, you can't. It'll kill you. So if you get one of the dots that's attached to the line, it gets rid of the line. I see. So you want to get rid of that as soon as you can because it clutters up the screen and makes it really hard to move around. So you want to focus on getting rid of those lines right away by getting one of them that's attached to the line. Do you ever try to get both of them that are attached? Sure, if you have the room to do it. Yep. Just staying out of trouble. Now there's, oh, three. Oh, you got the center one. Yeah. If, if you got one of the edge ones, would, it, would two stay attached still? Yeah. Okay. Well, it'll break. it'll break whatever it's attached to. Gotcha. So if I can get this one. Yep. There. Wow. Oh, it was just starting to turn. Yeah. Staying out of trouble. Oh. That expando guy got me, whatever it's called. Pulsar. Follows you around. Can't find a good break to get him. Oh. That was cool. All right, let's see if I can start at a higher level and show you the high score thing, which is a cool thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because if you get the high score of the day, you get to get to write your write name your free. name. Yeah. I'm sure back in the day people were drawing dicks and stuff. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of swear words and stuff on there too, yeah. So this game, I, I get to write my name at the end. Atari did this a lot where you start at a higher level and then if you pass the level you get a big bonus. Okay, now it's red, I can't go in there so I have to wait for it to turn back to blue. Oh, is that right? Yeah, now I can go back there. You can go through it, but it's right. red. if it's red you can't go through the line. Right, so you could never circle them because it's red. You'd have to go through the line. There's a lot of variety in this game. Everything else is just sucker plays. Stay away from them. Stay out of trouble. You can go through it when it's yellow, but it's your warning sign. I got lucky there. Now it's red, I gotta wait. Staying out of trouble. So what's your high score in this? Are you pretty good at this game? Uh, you know, I can get over 100,000 sometimes. Yeah. Uh, 
And we were talking before, there's a way to point press, right? I've seen videos too of guys. Yeah, yeah and let's see if I, can, if I get a chance. I can do it on the lower levels. At the yeah. higher levels, there's too much Because when you get rid of the, the, the circles, they, they drop this little plus thing, right? And you can, right. you can p keep circling those over and over and over and over again. Right, after this game, I'll go to the first level and show that. This game's gonna be over soon. Stay out of trouble. They could still kill you even though you just finished the screen, basically. Ah. Ah. Now you get to write your name. So here's the high score entry. That's cool. Write your name freehand with the <laughs> wall, which is a lot harder than it looks. Yeah, that's amazing. And then you have to also put your initials in because it'll save the initials. Right. But not the signature. Right. So okay. the signature is the top score of the day. Okay. Right. Show us the point pressing. I'll go to the first level. You really can do it at the very low levels when there's not a lot of other stuff on. So you circle one, and if you keep circling those guys, and you can keep them trapped there. And guys that are good can really circle quickly. They can do it over and over and over. I see. We, you can only get away with that on the early levels, right? Right, because when other stuff starts coming out... It's impossible. Right. Wow. Yeah, I was playing it earlier, and it, it, it's going to take me a while to get used to that trackball circling like that. It's a real finesse game to make nice circles. That's cool, Joe. All right, man. This time I'm really leaving. All right, guys, All right. let's go back to the basement. There you have it. That was Joe Majera's arcade. And, and come on, what did you think of that? I mean, my God, some of that stuff I had never even heard of. I have to admit, I was a little out of my element because I was seeing stuff that I I barely heard of. You know, like these games that are just almost like mythical. You know, and here they are right in front of me, and, and I'm like, uh, uh, who made that? What what is that? I mean, it was it was unbelievable. And some of that stuff, like. The stuff that really blew me away, my takeaway from this video was turkey shoot. You know what? I want one of those. That was pretty cool. You know, I, I've been kind of wanting a gun game. That might be the one for me because it's kind of retro and old. It's not new school. So it kind of fits my MO in the basement here. But and, and it was just cool. The sounds, I don't know if you guys noticed, are very similar to Robotron. It's obviously using the same a chipset or whatever to, to kind of make the sound effects. There's a lot of Robotron type sounds, which we remember we, we heard that stuff in Black Knight, the Black Knight pinball. But anyway, Turkey Shoot was really cool and Blaster. Uh, I, you know, I don't think I've ever seen a Blaster cabinet in person and to see both kinds, the Duramold Blaster, you know, the black plastic one, which is the more common one, and but, but still rare in itself. And then to see the wood version of Blaster, which is beyond rare, probably five of them exist. And we didn't, sh I didn't show it in the video, but Joe and I played the game afterwards, and, and I got, to, it, the game's very playable and very cool. I used to play that game a lot on my J-Rock board, but never played one on an original cabinet with that correct flight stick. And after playing that, I'm like, wow, man, I could, I could see myself getting a Blaster. That was, oh, that was cool, man. So anyway, I hope you guys liked it. What else? Oh, there was some other stuff there, that, that Beezus game, whatever, or Beezer. Man, there was some rare shit, guys. Uh, just look some of this stuff up that you saw in this video. It's a bummer we couldn't play everything like that rare Atari prototype, but just seeing those cabinets and being in the same room with them was enough for me, so. All right, so anyway, that, again, is this is the first part uh, of our Chicago video series. Uh, the next video, I think we're going to be hanging out with Greg from Arcade Impossible. So we'll be going back to Chicago and we're going to do some fun stuff, I assure you. Because if you guys remember, Greg and I did a video last November where we, 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 we picked up a Gorf in, in Dundee, Illinois, and it was a lot of fun. So we're going to be hanging out with Greg and Wynn again in the next video. So look for that one in a week or so. 
But anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys have never subscribed to my little channel, now is a great time. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. I release new videos on Sundays and sometimes in between, like this one. So if you like these games like I do, if you like classic arcade games, if you wanna see more game reviews, and road trips and restores, you gotta click uh, subscribe. So go ahead and click it. And then also check out my two podcasts uh, real quick, Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com and Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com. I do both of those podcasts live every Tuesday night starting at 9 p.m. Eastern on AllGames.com or go to iTunes or Stitcher or anywhere you find podcasts and search for Arcade Outsiders or Video Game Outsiders. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you did like it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Later. And bye.